Detective realized nurse is the actual killer. This is part that I haven't told the doctors. How about when I gave him a dose of 50 milligrams of insulin, non-diabetic, I believe he died the next day. Flip this was the moment moment detectives realized 50-year-old Elizabeth Wentlaufer, a seemingly innocent nurse, was actually the secret cause for multiple deaths. On. on the 11th of August... Hold on, hold on. Let's take a good look at her. <laughs> Let's take a good look at her, y'all. How about when I gave him a dose of 50 milligrams of insulin, non-diabetic, and believe he oh. died the next day. This was the moment detectives realized 50-year-old... There she is, Elizabeth Wetflower. They're everywhere. I've been telling you they're everywhere, right? They're they're in your courtrooms. They're in your office. They're at your laundromat. They're in your hospital. They're your police. They're your garbage man. There's somebody everywhere. That's a a monster. You know what I'm saying? That's a monster, Elizabeth Wetflower. Looks like the chick couple of y'all Elizabeth Wentlaufer, a seemingly innocent nurse, was actually the secret cause for multiple deaths. On the 11th of August... Of multiple Jane... deaths? She's a serial killer. Stop it. Silcox, a dementia patient, was found dead in his bed at Crescent Care Nursing Home. Crazy. With an autopsy coming up with nothing, his death was ruled as natural causes. But over the next few years, the same nursing home discovered patient after patient had died under the exact same circumstances. For eight years, the cause was a complete mystery to police and doctors. Eight years. Somebody right there that works there in eight years these uh super detectives couldn't figure it out and she was right under their noses all 800 pounds of her was right there and nobody saw it there's a like until september 2016 when elizabeth wentlaufer turned herself in to reveal the horrifying truth turned herself in did their job for them <laughs> Well done, you did it again, guys. You guys are the best. Find these mysterious deaths. Liz turned herself in at a mental health clinic who promptly contacted police. Hours later, Liz was brought into the interrogation room. So I just wanna go through, like I said, a couple formalities, cover a few little things off. And then the name of this, the name of this video is, a detective realizes the nurse is the actual killer. He don't realize shit. They didn't realize for eight years. She had to walk in and spill her beans and her cornbread and her ham and her turkey and everything else. If you wish to speak to a lawyer at any time, okay. we can make it happen whenever you like. The interrogation starts with Liz being read her rights. Liz has the right to a lawyer and the right to remain silent. However, it's looking doubtful she'll be exercising either of these rights as her detective asks a few questions to get to know her. Back at Meadow Park, what, were you, what was your addiction? I do not. And what, like, how much were you using? I was a binge user, so okay. I would use what I could get a hold of okay. by stealing it from the patient. Oh, Liz worked. She was still in their medication. <laughs> She's a monster. She's a monster. She was still in their medication, eating their food. Yo. And then serial killer on top of it as a nursing home work and for eight years these dummies couldn't figure it out and had access to all her patients medicine for years liz had been stealing a drug named hydromorphone a strong painkiller similar to the likes of morphine and using it secretly to deal with stress but it turns out addiction wasn't the only mental issue she was dealing with so as far as your latest position at um st elizabeth yeah that was your last position as a RN, is that yes, correct it was. okay and you said you resigned from there? Yeah. Okay. What, what brought you to that? That's that sort where of things get a little crazy. Okay. This is part that I haven't told the doctors. When my ex and I broke up in 2007, I was already taking the medication for my, for my borderline personality disorder. And I was so angry. And so all of this, so, so this lady comes in here super um, diagnosed, right? She's like, oh, you know. All of these disorders, all of this mental mumbo jumbo, right? But nobody, there was no record of this. There was none of this had 
any bearing on her job or 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 in her paperwork or nothing, no red flags, eight years, like, come on, man. And it was like a voice inside me, I'll use you, don't worry about it. The Liz voice inside you is the dude you ate six summers ago. Borderline personality disorder for years and took medication. Borderline personality, whatever that is. The voice said inside me, I'll use you, don't worry about it. Liz has struggled with borderline personality disorder for years and took medication to try and suppress it. This meant she hadn't let it affect her much, at least not until 2007, where this would change in a horrifying way. The detective then decides to ramp up the pressure and the interrogation quickly turns from an interrogation to a confession. Well, what kind of interrogation? She came there to confess. She went to the hospital to confess. There's no interrogation. She just—it's an interview. So, Mr. Silcox, um, it says here you're working at double shift uh, from three till seven, right? Three p.m. to seven a.m. In Woodstock. Yes. Okay. And tell me about your your knowledge of of James and and your daily interactions during a shift with him. Um, I didn't see him every time. He wasn't always my patient. I just knew from what uh, people had said that he would grab the, the nurses' uh, breasts and butt. And he would say horribly inappropriate things about his wife that now he was there, you know, just would say different things. And he did touch me inappropriately once. Jamie Silcox was an 84-year-old veteran with dementia being cared for by Liz and the team. But one evening, care would turn to carnage. A dirt bag, I think, is a dirt bag with, with or without dementia. You know what I'm saying? What's there is gonna, what's there is gonna show itself. You know? as Liz began to fill with rage and made a choice that would change the course of her life forever. How about my surgery? I gave him a dose of uh, 50 milligrams of insulin, not, not diabetic. Him a choice so that that's her confession. Carnage as Liz began to fill with rage. Look it. Look it. They didn't see her. She was right there. They didn't see her. Age and made a choice that would change the course of her life forever. How about my surgery? I gave him a dose of uh, 50 milligrams of insulin, not, not diabetic, and gave him an insulin shot. Throughout the night, he was yelling out, I love you, and I'm sorry. It's not, to, not to me, but just you could hear him falling out in this room, and that's what he was falling out. Because he knew he was dying. He knew he was dying. He was getting it all off his chest at that point. At 3.30, the uh, PSWs came to me and said that he was gone. The doctor came in. So she literally sat there and listened to this man that she euthanized. She just listened to him fall out. She's wilding. And uh, said that his cause of death was from uh, an embolism due to his uh, post hip. He, oh. had, uh, he had hip surgery. Look at that. So then a cop comes in and his incom I mean uh, a cop. Look at I'm so used to police incompetence. Now it's doctor incompetence. Again, they're your doctors too. There's a monster, there's a bunch of monster doctors, dentists, all of them. Um mind you, yeah, there's good people out there, but I'm talking about monsters. Don't come over here with your sympathy for monsters. So um so a doctor walks in and then confirms it's a it's an embolism that did it. It wasn't the fact that she pumped him with insulin and he's non-diabetic. Dr. Rose and Emma did a post-hip surgery. Insulin overdoses occur when someone takes more insulin than they need, regardless of if they're diabetic or not. Too much insulin will dramatically lower the body's blood sugar level, which can cause dizziness, loss of consciousness, and of course, death. What's more concerning though is how difficult it can be to identify it as the cause of death. And even in cases where it is identified, it's very difficult to prove it was an overdose of insulin that caused it in the first place. This wasn't even the first now, time she know that? this either. In 2007, she administered two other inordinate doses of insulin, but they failed to kill the patients. Uh. While this was the first time she was successful, it was far from the last. Maurice, how did you pronounce Maurice's last name? Grenat. Is it Grenat? Okay. He was another one who liked to grab breasts and asses. He was sometimes a patient of mine. See, at that time, I wasn't, I didn't. I, I, I'm calling bullshit. I'm saying she was going into those specific rooms to get her ass and breast touched. That's my, that's my vote. That's the kind of monster I think this is. I think she went in there for the attention. She ain't going to get nowhere else. I didn't have a set floor that I worked on. I worked on all the different floors of the nurse. Well, I you had access in. to kill everybody. So, uh... One afternoon, I was working with him, and he did grab me. 
And uh, again, I got that feeling inside that this is his time to go. So oh. I gave him an overdose of insulin after that. It's his time to go. And uh, I believe he died the next day. And what was his reaction to receiving the insulin? Again, it was just kind of like, oh, okay. And it says the doctor wants you to have a vitamin shot. That's what I usually say. Liz had now begun to refine her method, telling the victim it was just a vitamin shot, and had even hinted towards a motive. And uh, again, I got that feeling inside that this is his time to go. Each time she thought about killing somebody, she felt a deep, intense feeling in her stomach that implied God wanted that person back and that their time was up. And the different times that... She, she believed in her God telling her to murk everybody and shit. I have caused people's deaths or caused them discomfort through the, um, through the insulin. I believe it was the influence of that voice or whatever it was. It wasn't a voice in my head, it was a voice the voice in is the so, men that you yeah, believe alive in your that life. That's my marriage broke up that God was going to use me for something. And then after a while I started to really wonder after some of the murders if it was god or if it was the devil fooling me did you feel like you're doing the right thing? either way you're a foolish bitch Same for these no no i felt like i was doing what i was supposed to do but it wasn't what was right for them while people with BPD can often exhibit impulsive behavior and disturbed patterns of thinking, it's uncommon for patients to be affected the way Liz was. Many BPD patients may experience brief or prolonged episodes of strange experiences, such as hearing voices and feeling compelled to harm themselves or others, but it's exceedingly rare for them to act on them. It's likely her behavior was owing more to the antisocial personality disorder she was diagnosed with later on. Those affected with All these ASPD diagnoses didn't keep her from dealing with with old sick people like we that thirsty for nurses that we just hiring everybody around here here's the problem if you go and diagnose everybody at one nursing home just one there's 90 percent of them people are, are a red flag somewhere we are often observed to have a severe disregard for the law and the feelings of others. They also often find it harder to control their anger and refuse to let other people stand in the way of their reckless behavior. Neither one of these conditions are solely responsible let other people of others. They also often find it harder to control their anger. On. Those affected with ASPD are often observed to have a severe disregard for the law and the feelings of others. Hmm. They also often find it harder to control their anger and refuse to let other people hmm. stand in the way of their reckless behavior. Neither one of these conditions are solely responsible for Liz's behavior. No. It was likely a combination of the two that planted the idea in her mind and then allowed her to go through with it with little resistance. So glad. So let's take this to November of 2011. Mm -hmm. at let's see if Gladys was an ass grabber or a, or a titty grabber, like she said about those men whose grandchildren had to watch this. Care. Um, it says here Gladys was a type 2 diabetic um, and had dementia. How old do you think Gladys was? 92. 92? 92. Okay. Tell me a little bit about Gladys. What did you what was she like when you um. cared for her? Well, when I first started caring for her, she was walking and talking, and she had quite the spirit. Um, she once, <laughs> she once punched a man. She gets a kick out of that. Too many of y'all get a kick of that. Kick out of that. You heard that? <laughs> she she punched a man. <laughs> Shut your stupid asses up, man. You know that's dumb. That that excites you. That that gasses you up. You 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 gotta stop. You gotta stop. This lunatic here. She don't feel no guilt for killing nobody. But she's all giddy because a woman punched a man in the face. Because uh, she overheard the nurses telling one of the gentlemen, no, you can't push your wife around. You have to come with us. And she turned around and she said, you can't treat a woman like that. Boom. And hit the man. And hit the man. <laughs> oh, they were all in a state of trying to keep them from fighting with each other and trying to keep them from hurting us. Right. Yeah, she was very clumsy, but she went down downhill fast. Did she? Eventually, um, she was she had um, dementia, didn't take her pills well, didn't eat well, very stubborn woman. And uh, as always, one evening I just got that red surging feeling that she was going to be the one, mm -hmm. and um, gave her insulin overdose. Did you ever get that feeling outside of work? 
No, never. No. Did you, did you, you ever get that, that feeling for yourself? You knowing that something was going to happen that shift. No, no, it's happened at work. So, if I were to use a phrase spur of the moment, would it be something that you would just have that feeling come on? Or yeah, I guess it would it build up for the moment, but it would it usually start happening, you know, focused on one patient, and then I would feel that red surging, which is what made me think it was God. Which I'm so embarrassed. Like I said, I'm not here to judge you. Right. Right. The judge One of the that. most strange things about Liz is how casual she is throughout the She's entire chilling. profession. Not only is she happy to tell the Cold detectives bloody. all the details she can remember about the murders themselves, but also laughs and tells stories about the victims the entire time. However, she also admits to feeling embarrassed about thinking the feeling was God, it's showing that stupid. she feels as though she has a strong personal image to uphold but has a complete lack of remorse for her victims. This thought process is indicative of a sociopath, but no personality tests or analyses have ever reinforced this idea. Mm. September or October of 07. What yeah. the hell, indeed? Helen was 2011. Yeah. Helen, I don't remember a lot about. She was very quiet, very determined. She seemed to be waiting to die. Mm -hmm. Again, I had that feeling. That <laughs> Again, I had that feeling. That's her every night. She go lay down. She had that feeling to go back to the refrigerator. Again, I had that feeling. Again, I had that feeling. Again, and, I had that um, feeling. I made a bit of a fuss about her that night because she was very lucid. And we talked about how much she liked blueberry pie and ice cream. Okay. So on my, on my break, I went to uh, Walmart. I got a small blueberry pie and some ice cream and brought it to her. And she ate three or four bites. And then that night I overdosed her. <laughs> like I said, I had that feeling that it was Woo! her time to go and she had that feeling again. Towards the end of her life at that point. You know that she was the first in Chicago. Okay. And that was in your mind, in your stomach. They're everywhere, y'all. In the cap area. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They work everywhere. That your liquor store, corner store, school. They're everywhere. Just monsters. After I did it, I got that laughter. When would you feel and somebody will come into this chat at some point somebody will come into the comments and judge me for judging this animal <clears throat> and at no point judge this animal right and i have to question their who they are as human beings as people that laughter would you feel it right after you injected it or once the person passed away um both yeah both as well as the feeling in her stomach before the murder, Liz also mentions feeling as though there's laughing coming from her chest. Given that it happens both <laughs> as she's administering the dose and after she hears the victim is dead, Eight this years. feeling is likely just an exaggerated feeling of gratification from knowing that her job has been completed. Damn. Psychopaths are thought to have a severe case of ASPD, and studies have shown that psychopaths also have a much stronger reaction to immediate gratification. Mm. This is what compels psychopaths to make more impulsive decisions, as they value the reward more than an unaffected person. And it's possible this just manifests in Liz as a more physical manner than usual, causing the almost euphoric laughing sensation. Just out of curiosity, how much insulin would it take? To kill someone See, that wasn't diabetic. Oh, don't yeah. give me the I don't know. If anybody knows, it's you. And how the hell are you not diabetic? No. no. You didn't know that as a nurse that this amount? Or... No, there is no that amount. Okay. And I'm just, I, I, I just yeah. simply just don't know that yeah. answer. There is no that amount. Okay. Different people would react differently to different amounts. Is that fair to say? Yes. And would it obviously make a difference if they were diabetic or not diabetic? Yes. You don't say a lot of negative things about how you're. Did you, did you get along with her okay? Did she ever do anything to, to harm you or? No, no, she was very quiet. It was just, I got that feeling that she, you know, she's next, it's her time to go. Wow. Liz had no problems with Helen, and even went out of her way to get her favorite food before killing her. This creates a strange dynamic where she obviously feels some form of remorse both before and after the murder, but still goes through with it without hesitation. But of course, the biggest show of remorse was when she decided to turn herself in in the first place. Something that's understandable for a neurotypical person who's committed. Now let me ask you, after eight years, is it a... Is it a show of remorse or is it a selfish decision? Because now you can't sleep. You know what I'm saying? People be like, uh, he showed remorse. Listen, uh, let's use G-Dep. G-Dep is a rapper, right? 
G Dep is a rapper that um he he killed a man when he was very young and he got away with it and he became a star became a, a you know a, 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 an artist at bad boy then after that um he was getting high he was getting the guilt was killing him the guilt was killing him it wasn't about i mean i'm sure it could have been there's a possibility that it could have been oh he was remorseful but it's most of the time it's a more selfish thing oh i can't live with it no more me so she just couldn't live with it no more i don't think she felt remorse i just think it was bothering her so much Maybe that is remorse. I don't know. I don't think it is. I just think it's selfish. I think naturally the the spirit or the brain or whatever, the soul is saying, wow, you know what you did? You know what you did? And if you can't sleep with that and you go turn yourself in, well, that's just you trying to fix something for yourself because you're all fucked up now. So to me, it's selfish. She could have smoked one or herself. Two she should have insulated, insulated, insinuated herself. <laughs> when it comes to serial killers who have operated over the span of multiple years. She stated that she does understand the difference between right and wrong and never claimed to take pleasure from the murders. No pleasure, she laughed from her years. chest. She stated that Big she laugh. does understand the difference between right and wrong and never claimed to take pleasure from the murders, saying that she felt terrible after every single one and even tried to reach out for help on a few occasions. Imagine that, uh, does it feel like a weight off your shoulders? Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> it's never been a weight off of her shoulders, not those shoulders. I've heard for quite some time. And I've tried to get help a couple times. Yeah. Well, sometimes it takes a few attempts to, to finally commit to it, right? Yeah, I had a pastor that I told him he prayed over me and told me I'd be fine. And that was she just made the pastor an accomplice after the fact. I don't know if it was in a confessional, and I don't know how that holds up in court, but she just implicated a pastor. God's grace, and then... When was that? Look, he can say, when was that? Who was that? What's his name? Where's he at? Let me talk to him. Why? Because he should have called us about you. Because we don't have to do our job after eight years and investigate. He should have called us about you. Uh, Halloween 2013. And you, you kind of divulged to what had happened to, your, to you uh, to that point in your life with yeah. involving these people? Yeah. Okay. And where was that? That was here in town. Okay. Liz then went on to confess to eight murders in total, as well as attempting it on six more people, some within just days of each other. She'd uh, given Six in attempts? <laughs> oh, shit. Eight bodies, six, <coughs> six attempts. For eight years wow. in total, all the while knowing what she did was wrong and frankly disgusting. It took her until 2016 to finally head to a mental health and addiction institute to confess and write up the four page documents the detective has been reading from. Okay, um, we're gonna wrap things up, but here's what's, here's what's gonna happen. Okay. Okay, and part of this is gonna be up to you. Um, what are your plans? Going forward from here. Going forward from here, I want to go home. Okay. <laughs> I want to have a good night's sleep. Okay. I want to spend uh, Thanksgiving weekend with my family. Okay. And I want to be available to the police at any time they need me. Okay. And if I have to come back for a trial, I have to come back for a trial. Unfortunately, Thanksgiving <laughs> with her family is. Yo, man, the demands that these lunatics be making, and the and the defenses that you lunatics give them, shit. She just told him, I want Thanksgiving. Well, this is this is not a negotiation. This is a demand. I want Thanksgiving dinner with my family. All of, I want to eat all of their food. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to go. Uh, I'll be available to y'all when y'all need me. And I'll be ready to come back to trial when I'm ready to come back to trial. But right now, I want to go home. I want to have Thanksgiving with my family and back up. Tripping. It's far from where she was heading. Instead, she was formally charged with eight counts of murder. Don't she look like a, like if... Like if Arya Stark just gave up and Arya Stark just started eating everything in Winterfell and uh and killing everybody in the in the in the old folks ward and shit on the castle, that's her right there. Damn. Serial killer. Look at your next door neighbor 
It could be her. It could be your nurse. It could be your doctor. Murder. Four counts of attempted murder. First degree murder. Two attempted counts of murder. Aggravated assault. Gra aggravated assault. In 2017, she waived her right to a preliminary hearing and confessed in court to all challenges. On the 26th of June, Dunzo. 2016, Elizabeth Wetlaufer was sentenced to eight consecutive life Damn. sentences, ensuring the only good night's sleep she'll be getting for the rest of her life will be behind bars. There you go. You did it to yourself, little Arya Stark. No, there was no prerequisite. Nobody knew all of these um, diagnoses that she had. Nobody knew none of this stuff, none of the way she is, none of the way she was. And for eight years, they couldn't figure out it was her. She implicated a pastor that she confessed to, which I'm sure they've tried to follow up on. Um, and she turned herself in over whatever, whether it was selfish or whether she just wanted to be able to sleep. Well, good luck. <laughs> you got eight, eight, eight L's. Eight L's. You had six attempts, too. You wildin'.